what God is doing. God is good. I just want to mention that uh, some of you have been keeping our daughter-in-law and son in prayer. That they are the proud parents of a new baby boy. They're proud of grandma and grandma. But uh, she was in the hospital on Thursday and uh, Friday, and, but she's been released. So thank you for your prayers and your interest in them. So I want to uh, begin here with just a word of prayer as I do this message. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for being such a gracious God. Thank you for being the God that has made us. We are the sheep of your pasture, and we pray that all that we do here today and every day might be pleasing in your sight. And so we invite your presence to be with us. May your Holy Spirit speak through these lips, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is a, oh, yeah, turn that on, don't I? Yeah. Just unmute it. Unmute it. There we go. Okay. This is the uh, St. Nicholas in Amsterdam. It's a famous cathedral, and uh, people go there from all over the world to hear these beautiful chimes. And there was a terrible one time that went there to hear these chimes and he went up into, the, into that tower, that bell tower, and he saw there this man whose hands were encased in wooden gloves and he was beating on these chimes and it was just a terrible clamor. He couldn't stand it. He, he left there and he wondered, why do people always talk about these wonderful chimes there in Amsterdam? On the next day, he was in a different part of the city, and while they were standing there observing something, they could hear these beautiful chimes. And somebody asked about them, and they said, Oh, we hear the chimes of St. Nicholas. And the man who had been there the day before, up in the bell tower, now realized why people talk so favorably about those chimes. You ever feel like you're in a bell tower? With this terrible clamor and, and uh, activity going on? Well, whether you know it or not, uh, God can be in the midst of that. Look at here, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. Not as pleasing men, but God, which tries our hearts. Do we want to be God pleasers, yes. or do we want to be men pleasers? That's the question. It's a good thing to remember when we're here in a small church. You know, those of you who are, are members here, you know that sometimes wearing two or three hats, things can get pretty, pretty overwhelming, can not they? And so we need to remember that we're here to please God. Even if nobody else ever sees us, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in the church that nobody sees. Uh, do we see when somebody's here cleaning the church? No. Do we ever stop to think, well, who's doing that? Do we ever thank them? What about uh, all of the you know, we had a VBS here a few weeks ago. A lot of preparation went into that. And these clothes, yeah, we, we got to see the end result. It was wonderful. But we didn't get to see all the preparation and all the time and effort that went into that. Well, every once in a while, we might make mention of something here, here from the pulpit or in the bulletin. But not enough. We don't really sometimes take people aside and make it a point to say, thank you. We really appreciate you and what you've done. And so I'd be naive to think that anybody is here today because they want to get all the accolades and all the thank yous, positive strokes, but it's certainly nice when something like that happens, isn't it? So 
But even if nobody ever said an encouraging word, even if no one ever pulled you aside to say thank you, even if they didn't say, you're doing a great job, keep it up, is it possible that we can still serve the Lord with gladness? As our text says there, be so honored. Yes, the answer is absolutely. We keep in mind a key principle. We're going to look at that here today, found in uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter. If you would turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, we also find this in Colossians. But we're studying Ephesians this quarter, so we're going to look at this passage in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 5, beginning at verse 5 there. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, it says, Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. I have to admit that most men make pretty poor masters. Some of you ladies are in green here. I don't know whether that's the way I tend to or not. But, but the fact of the matter is um, we don't always see and appreciate what others do like we should. I know I work for some pretty, pretty good masters or bosses, if you will. And oftentimes they would say thank you for you know what we've done, but I've worked for one or two that you really didn't know if they really appreciated all the hard work that you did. But uh, I'm not trying to be critical of them, I'm just trying to recognize that there are some that are better at it than others. And here in the church, this is a volunteer organization, right? So listen to this, what somebody's written called anyway. People are unreasonable illogical and self-centered. <laughs> Love them anyway. <laughs> if you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. But do good anyway. <laughs> if you're successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. <laughs> Succeed anyway. <laughs> The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty will make you vulnerable. And be honest anyway. People favor underdogs, but follow only the top dogs. <laughs> Fight for some underdogs anyway. Give the world the best that you have, and you will get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. Remember, it was Jesus. Jesus who said there in Matthew chapter 10, And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of these my followers, you will surely be rewarded. Do good anyway. Go with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Look at these first few verses here. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. It says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men, to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may, be, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will himself reward you openly. And so, we're not to do things for the praise of men. 
and the accolades that it brings to us, or even the monetary rewards that it brings us. We're to do things to please God, yeah. to be His workers, His witnesses. And so Jesus goes on to say here, you know, in this uh, model prayer that He gives, that uh, we're to pray to, to the Father, and uh, if we go down to verses 5 and 6, we're not to be like the hypocrites that stand there in the marketplace where everybody can see them. And you go down to verse 16 to 18, if we're fasting, we shouldn't put on a long face, but we should put on a smile, right? Amen. If we do it for man's rewards, we're going to be disappointed with the result. And so, <clears throat> do it as unto the Lord. Look at this statement from this devotional book called This Day with God. Let us in our life work strive constantly to answer the prayer of Christ, that we may be united with one another and with Him. Let us always, before undertaking anything, ask ourselves a question. Will this please my Savior? Is it in harmony with the will of God? The consciousness that we are bringing the Christ life into the daily experience will give a sacred dignity to the everyday duties. All that we do will be done with faithfulness that the Master might be honored. And so, why do we do what we're doing? I think of that story of the widow with the two mites. You know, she didn't expect to get any, any uh, particular thanks. You know, she gave those two mites. I have a couple of those mites somewhere in my house. <laughs> it's only been a year since we've moved, but we still can't find them. Anyhow, they're tiny. They're so tiny. You would, well, you might be able to see them up here, but not back there. They're really tiny. And yet, what did Jesus say about those two mites that she gave, that offering that she gave that day? She put in more than all of the others. Because she gave it from the heart. Yeah. And so how is it with us? Are we doing what we do because we want to have the praises of men or the praises of our Maker? Amen. And so... <clears throat> Jesus notices what we do when he says, even if you give one of these little ones a cold drink of water, your reward is assured in heaven. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6. Look at 5 and 6 again. It says, Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ. Not with eye service. What, what is eye service? Well, eye service is doing something to be seen of others, to be noticed, to be praised, if you will. Well, do we want to be men pleasers or do we want to be God pleasers? That's the question. Look at this from third volume of the testimonies, it says, men, women, who will be just as faithful and exact, careful and diligent in their labor, in the absence of their employer, as in his presence, proving by their faithfulness that they are not merely men pleasers, eye servants, but are conscientious, faithful, true workmen, doing right, not for human praise, but because they love and choose the right from a high sense of their obligation to God. Amen. Don't do it for the recognition. You know, when we, I shared part of my testimony a couple weeks ago, I told about growing up on a farm and then how I was one of the youngest people probably in the Tri-County area to ever be put on a tractor because my dad wasn't able to do the farm work for the needed because of his rheumatoid arthritis. 
And then when my dad was killed, all of a sudden, I didn't get to drive a tractor anymore. My, my uncles were kind enough to let me pick rocks. <laughs> and I'm walking, you know, behind their, their machinery mile after mile. I wouldn't sit on that little, little uh, trailer that they had for us to throw the rocks on. I walked every step. Why? I was trying to please them. Men pleaser. Well, <laughs> nothing against working hard. <laughs> Going the extra mile. But we need to be doing it for God. God pleasers. And so, here in Ephesians chapter 6 again, and this is from the New Living Translation, says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. And it says, as slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all of your heart. Don't do it for men, but do it for God. And when we're doing things for God, it doesn't matter if we're being recognized, praised, or even remunerated, because we're doing it to bring God glory. And so do it as unto the Lord. Notice this from this book, Our High Calling. Religion is not a matter of externalities. Religion is a thing of the heart. God's looking upon our heart. Why are we doing the things that we do? Is it because we want to impress somebody? Or because we love Jesus? And so, God wants us to be pleasing Him. I believe that the key is found here in verse 7. Do it with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to man. And the important part is this. Do it as to the Lord. You're not doing what you do to get accolades from all the people. You're doing it to be pleasing to the Lord. And the Lord rewards, and the Lord sees, and the Lord will not forget. And God has a special purpose for each one of us. Notice what we read here in this statement. It says, everyone born into the world is given his or her work to do for the purpose of making the world better. Each one has his sphere. And if the human agent makes God his counselor, then there will be no working at cross purposes with God. He allots to everyone a place and a work. And if we individually submit ourselves to be worked by the Lord, however confused and tangled life may seem to our eyes, God has a purpose in it all. And so sometimes things don't seem to make sense to us, and the clamor from the bell tower doesn't seem to be blessing anyone, but in the distance, in God's kingdom, it is a blessing. Amen. And so, the question is, who are we doing what we do for? I dare say that nine tenths of what we do will probably never be seen by anyone, and yet, if God sees, that's all that matters. But we should make sure that others know how much we do appreciate that. Um, Philippians 1 3. Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And we are told here in Matthew 6, verse 6, your father who sees in secret will reward you. Aren't you glad? that our Father sees us. Well, 
Matthew 20, verse 28, tells us that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Here in this communion service, we, we serve one another. And the foot washing service, the, uh, but it's, it's really only a symbol of a greater service that we have for each other, a willingness to serve one another. That's what it says in Philippians chapter 2. It says, who being in the form of God, Jesus, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. And he knelt there and washed the feet of his disciples. He wasn't thinking about, well, who's going to wash my feet? I shouldn't be doing this. No. Jesus willingly chose to do that. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Well, I was quite certain that great missionary to Africa, he said, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found a way to serve. So would you like to have true happiness? Find a way to serve. Follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Whether you hold a church office or not, whether you do things that can be seen up front, it matters to God that you are willing to do it and be a God pleaser and not for men's applause. And so whether you're teaching the Sabbath school or you're taking up the offering, whether you're playing the music or running the sound system or mowing the grass or cleaning the church, whatsoever you do, do it all, all to the glory of God. And remember, it says in Ephesians 6, to do it as unto the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful that we have been called to serve. We're thankful that Jesus taught us how we can truly serve one another. Even if we offer a glass of cold water to a little one, that the reward that we are promised will be there. And Lord, I pray that we would not be thinking just of rewards, but we would be thinking about how we can show others who Jesus truly is. And as we do so, we can serve the Lord with gladness. So that may that be our experience here this day and each day. And thank you for the privilege that it is. And we praise you and we thank you for the gift of Jesus, your Son, who led the way and showed us how to truly be a servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.